Well, we just got a whole lot more information about the collapse of the building in Surfside, which is, of course, in uh, Dade County, Miami area uh, of Florida. Um, I am particularly interested in this because, as I said a couple days ago, I know somebody who uh, lived in that building who is thankfully okay, unlike a lot of their neighbors. And I thought that the collapse, uh, you know, based on the surveillance video that we saw from the building next door, um, the collapse was, you know, reminiscent to me of, of Building 7 of the World Trade Center, or more recently, um, uh, the uh, collapse of the Associated Press building in Gaza, um, both of which were um, man-made in one way or another. Even if you accept the official narrative of Building 7, um, that was still, even officially, the result of, um, you know, the 9-11 attacks. Um, neither of those buildings just dropped and, and, and fell into, um, and completely collapsed perfectly into their own footprint, fell straight down at, um, you know, at free fall speed out of nowhere. And so that's why this building collapse was, to me, extremely suspicious. And especially now, since I know somebody who lived there, I would like to know what happened. Um, I, you know, it's, it's a, it has a bit more of a personal thing to it. It's not just a, uh, um, a pure intellectual curiosity. And I had also said that uh, um, I was skeptical of whether or not this could be a structural issue, because in order for a building to fall straight down, logically, I believe, and I think engineers, from what I, from researching Building 7, I think engineers say the same thing about this, in order for a building to fall straight down like that, you need all of the structural support to fail evenly across the entire, you know, uh, foundation of the building simultaneously. You need it all uh, to, to break and to fail at once. Otherwise, if you just have part of the structure fail, well, th that part is going to collapse and you're going to have um, other, like, you know, like let's say there are 20 columns that hold the building up. If five of those columns fail and the other, you know, 15 are still structurally, you know, sound, well, the building is going to start to collapse underneath where those five columns are. And then the rest of the building will just kind of fall in that direction if it collapses at all, or some of it will be left standing, kind of like what we see um, uh, with the part of the building that is by the street. But instead, as I said, we see this building fall straight down. Um, you know, it did not sort of tip, topple over in one direction or another. But with that said, we now have um, evidence that there was structural issues with the building um, because there was a report that has been uh, now released from uh, 2018 that has pictures in it showing structural damage to the building. Now... <clears throat> this report, I have to say, is, uh, you know, I'm not, I, I don't think you should just dismiss it offhand because uh, one thing I have learned um, from my contact in the building um, is that there was an assessment on, uh, you know, for all the condo owners, they were going to have to pay a substantial sum of money. I don't know if I can legally disclose that or if there's some kind of NDA around that, but I do know that there was a big assessment coming for this building, and I don't know if, whether that had to do with the structural issues or not. What I do know is that publicly, um, there has been no permits pulled of, to do any structural work on the building. It was stuff like uh, roofing and um, uh, things related to window washers, putting in supports to, uh, to hold up the scaffolding for window washing. The attorney for the uh, for the condo association, though, um, and this is you know a this, this is not run by a management company. This is not like an apartment building. Um, this is a condo. I'm not sure how much you know the rest of the country how common condos are, uh, or the condo structure where it is owners who, um, uh, who you know who run the place and who make all the decisions. It's you know it's people who live there most of the time, um, but their attorney. Uh, says that they planned on that they were aware of the structural issues and they were uh, they planned on uh, beginning to fix them within like days or something like that. And so I'm I'm not going to get conspiratorial and say that I think that these structural issues didn't exist because you can tell from the pictures the pictures are of this building in the report. Um, there is one exterior photo because a lot of them most of the photos were from inside in the parking garage underneath. 
um, the main building that you can see outside. And underground structures are kind of uncommon here in Florida. You know, we don't have basements in our houses, uh, but you can kind of understand for a condo building like this, uh, having a basement for parking kind of makes sense. Although, the reason why we don't have basements in Florida is because we have such a high water table here. They would fill up with water. And that apparently was an issue, according to this inspector. Uh, the pool deck um, was not built at a proper angle. And this is my, one of my problems. I bring it up all the time, uh, constantly, especially in, 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 at least in my area. We have a lot of older places that... You know, they would build a building and then the, the parking lot and the rest of everything around the building, the rest of the lot would be dirt or grass or something porous. It would be natural, you know, ground. It was not hard surface like asphalt or concrete. And the problem is when, when they come in at these newer places, they want to pave everything. And the county now mandates. I mean, I don't even think you can build a business now um, where I live and just leave dirt for parking. I think you have to pave a parking lot and have, you know, highly manicured landscaping and crap like that. But when you do that, when you create more hard, impermeable surfaces, it you don't have anywhere for the water to go. The water just kind of gets trapped by those hard surfaces and it can't, um, it can't diffuse back into the ground. And so the problem uh, that this engineer cited uh, with this whole condo is that the pool deck essentially trapped water on top there were also planters and, I guess, pavers and stuff um, over the pool deck. Um, and water would pool there. And over the past, you know, 40 years, that has eroded down and created cracks in the concrete. And that water was then able to seep down into underneath um, into the, uh, the parking garage. Now, from what I understand, it was not enough to cause, uh, to cause uh, flooding or anything like that. Uh, but what he did show was that in uh, parts of the parking garage, uh, there had been enough concrete eroded away that there was exposed rebar. Um, and exposed rebar in Florida and the coastal areas is a very, very bad thing to have when you have a concrete building. And the reason for this is salt. The sea air uh, will corrode the rebar and the rebar when it rusts will expand and when rebar expands in concrete it breaks the concrete and it will you know and it'll crumble and so it's you know it, it's kryptonite for a concrete building and so when i saw those pictures when i saw exposed rebar especially in the outside saw it on parts of outside of the building underneath balconies um and it was it was a picture that i could tell was clearly this building um it was not i don't think that that was faked at least that picture it confirms that there was exposed rebar on the outside of this building um, and, it, you know, it's kind of like when you have wood rot, um, or rust on your car, you know, there's, there's what you can see on the outside, but then it, you know, it's a lot worse on the inside. If you see one cockroach in your house, you can be guaranteed there's at least 500 hiding somewheres that you can't see. And so this is the first real thing that makes me think that this, you know, um, you know, I don't know whether I, <laughs> whether I would prefer it. I've kind of gone back and forth on this, whether I would prefer that this be intentional or not intentional. Um, because if it's intentional, that's evil and scary, but at least you can kind of write that off as an isolated incident thing. And it's not a threat to anyone living in a building. Whereas if this wasn't intentional, you kind of have to wonder every time you go into a big building, um, gee, is this building about to collapse into its own footprint? You know, building seven style. But seeing um, the pictures uh, from this report, it makes me think that it, you know, it is possible. Although it still doesn't explain why it all happened at once. Um, when you have this sort of thing, you would expect to see major, um, major cracking up above sooner than you know than all at once. For example, I mean, I've just following real estate and things like that. There have been condo buildings that have had structural issues, and you, you they're obvious. You know, when you have problems in the foundation, it shifts the whole building. Everything above it should shift, too. And so you get things like cracks in the floor of your apartment. Um, and I'm not saying that you necessarily have to have that. But the fact that, well, again, I shouldn't say the fact because we don't know yet. Um, but I guess the, the, the fact that this building was not known for that, I would think that... Just in the past, we've gotten such 
so much more warning when there's been structural issues with a building. It doesn't just go all at once. You know, it's a, it tends to be a slow decline. Um, and, and the one thing that I just I will not I cannot get over, even though again he's showing he's showing the the, the pillars in the parking garage underneath that are holding up the whole building. Um, that there is concrete crumbling, and uh, that clearly, um, we know once there's rebar exposed, uh, that that erosion uh, or that that corrosion um, is going to destroy the pillars. That would explain to me part of the building collapsing. It's very hard for again for me to still for that to explain that entire section collapsing all at once and then leaving the part by the street unscathed. What protected the foundation um, of the section of the building that is still standing? How did the columns uh, and the foundation of the building, that, the part that they collapsed, how did that all deteriorate so evenly to where it all failed almost simultaneously? I mean, there was a little bit of it. You can see because it starts in the middle of the building and then kind of spreads out a little bit. And then you have that section on the beach side um, that last thin section that, again, instead of toppling sideways towards um, where the initial collapse was, it collapses straight down, indicating that the supports underneath that section of the building were taken out. And you and I don't think that they were, well, no, no I'm going to stop myself there because I don't know for certain what I was about to say. Now, for most people, I think that this news story will probably be the end of it for them. This will be the entire narrative, uh, always neglect. Um, uh, we need more regulation or some crap like that. But I'm not entirely certain. There's still more that I want to know. Because again, uh, this report is talking about stuff mostly around the pool. That's where this guy is showing. And I mean, the 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 pool itself didn't even collapse. But this is the pool deck area. Now a good chunk of the pool deck of that back part is totally collapsed. And you can see it down into the parking garage. Um... But not all of it did, and the the collapse does not appear to have started in the pool deck. Now it's tough because we don't have an aerial view of the collapse as it is happening, so we don't see exactly where it starts. Um, but at this point, I'm willing to say that this is you know, definitely the most likely um, cause of the entire collapse. Uh, I think that there should still be a very thorough investigation, obviously, as there always should be when there's, you know, this many deaths or even if the building collapsed and there was nobody in it, um, you know, you would still want, you know, I'm sure the insurance company would still want to investigate it, uh, you know, for the sake of trying to cover themselves and not have to pay out good, you know, pay out uh, uh, claims if they don't have to. But, you know, I have to say, if I was on the, uh, the condo board and I saw this report, um, looking at what's been published, my my immediate reaction would not be that the building is uh, you know is uh, under the threat of imminently collapsing. That would not be my takeaway from this report. Yes, the report says that there are some structural issues, and it shows um, some very very scary photos again of exposed rebar, which exposed rebar and sea air very bad combination that will you know that is cancer but again it would not make me think that the entire building is just going to come all, just one day come out of the blue come crashing down to earth all at once it would make me think that hey there's a there's a possibility that part of the building could collapse and some people could be hurt um it would never make me think the entire thing is going to come down that's just not what this report conveys to me if i and again the people sitting on the condo board are not engineers People sitting on the condo board are regular homeowners. Um, you know, these are people who live there um, or who maybe own a unit and rent it out or something like that. So I think we've gotten some pieces to the puzzle now, but we don't have the full picture. Uh, I think we're far from that. This is, you know, this this report in and of itself is not conclusive enough. So it's far from conclusive. Because again, I have I have seen built I've been in buildings that have had worse structural damage. Um, than this one appeared to have in the report. Uh, I have seen worse, and there and those buildings are still standing today. By the way, but the building I have in mind in particular that I was in that was um, that had massive cracks in the floors and upper floors. Um, you know, in the middle of people where people were living, um, and it, it was ongoing for years. 
before they eventually got that place fixed up. And it was worse than than this place was when right before it supposedly uh, came crashing down into its own footprint. Now, hopefully, the people who would maybe know more about um, the condition of the building underneath there, um, whether or not the cracks and things had gotten worse, what, how widespread it was, you know, if you know, if there was concrete, for example, if there was concrete crumbling off of every you know support pillar underneath this section of the building, um, if there was exposed rebar in every single one of those things, then I could believe that all of those failed at once. Because again, if they're all getting um, exposed to that sea air, you've got rebar which expands inside the column and is um, destroying, uh, eating away at the at the support for the entire building simultaneously. Well, then I could understand how once one went, the, you know, once the weakest link went, it put too much strain on the rest of them and they all came crashing down. But if this is just a handful of columns um, that were affected by this, I have to I, I, I'm going to have trouble blaming um, what was observed here on that kind of a catastrophic collapse. And again, keep in mind, I'm not an engineer. I think that uh, the, port, the report also mentions, though, um, uh, I haven't seen any pictures of uh, something to do with the foundation walls, with, you know, the outer walls of the foundation. That's something that I have not seen addressed, um, but would also go a long way in explaining why this would, you know, why the, the you know, the, the, um, not the magnitude, the synchronicity of the collapse, let's put it that way. Because again, that needs to be figured out and explained properly in order to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Or else, I mean, who would set foot in a condo at this point? Um, you know, knowing what we know now, if this, you know, if this really just happened at random, there needs to be really dark. We need to know exactly why this happened. But then again, I've never been a fan of condos or high rises or mid rises anyway. I'd be very happy if they all went away. Of course, then if they were all replaced, you know, with two story buildings, then they would, you know, be even more expensive um, than they are now. But, eh, you know, I can't afford beach, a beachfront condo either way, whether it's two stories or whether it's, you know, 20 stories. Um, nor would I want to live in a 20-story building. But, I mean, frankly, people do make a good point. I mean, this is not, um, Miami's not New York. People need to understand that. New York is, univ is um, uniquely suited to skyscrapers. Uh, New York, is, Manhattan in particular, I believe, I mean, is, is a rock. I think that all those buildings are down into, you know, pretty solid bedrock, uh, and they're very stable. The opposite is true um, in Florida. Florida is all sand. We don't have rocks here. I had only ever seen a rock growing up, um, you know, before I went to other states. Um, actually, now I still, I, now that I think about it, I really, I've really never been anywhere that with big rocks. But I mean, the only place I ever saw rocks were like at a landscape supply place that sold boulders or rocks to put in shrub bits or things like that. Um, you know, we just don't have rocks laying on the ground, and that's in, and that's an indication that there's not rocks under the ground either. There is no real bed rock. Um, I mean, it's like limestone, but it's soft and it's way under a bunch of sand that is very soft. So, you know, it's just it's not not the greatest, um, not the greatest place to try and build these big tall buildings. But again, with all that said, that is that's that's set totally separate um, from this kind of a catastrophic collapse. That's not an explanation for it. And all these, you know, I mean, these uh, these shit libs on Twitter who are trying to blame this on climate change or something. I mean, it's just pathetic. So that's a big update, um, but that's all we have for today. I, I hope that the information keeps coming. I don't I don't want this to be the next Vegas shooting and just totally get memory hold. Um, so I'm going to uh, gonna try and stay on top of this and explore all possible avenues. So. With that said, I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.